How's it going YouTube? It's APOC and welcome back to another Lens Studio tutorial. Today we're in Lens Studio 4.10 which just came out yesterday. Therefore, a lot of the documentation is very, very lacking. We're going to be doing a API call with the new API features today on the Alpaca API, which is the stock market one. So what you're seeing right now is what we're going to make. Uh, it's basically a text object that's going to show you the current price of Snap or whatever stock ticker you want to use. This is what the function looks like. And yeah, let's go ahead and do it. I actually need to reference this. As I said, there's not much documentation. Let's just throw it in there for reference. But yeah, file new project. I'm going to start from scratch so you guys really understand what's going on here. All right, so the first thing you need to do is click on this asset library button, click on APIs, and then we're going to import the alpaca one. But first you can hover over these eye icons and see what each of these do. One thing to note with the alpaca one is that it says build lenses with alpacas real time or historical financial market exchange APIs. The real time API does not actually work in Lens Studio. At least to my knowledge, it's not possible. And one of the uh, guides on the website or Lens Studio website actually does not mention the real time either. Neither does the template. So I'm pretty certain the real time API is not supported. I'm not sure why it's mentioned there though. But yeah, just import here. And uh, now we need to add in a script. So we're just going to add in a scene object for that to live on. We'll add in a script, drag it over, just click on that, drag it into the inspector, or you can do add component script. Click on the script after that. Open up your script. And if we go into the, you know, Lens Studio API, it doesn't really show you how to do this, but we need to import a remote service module here, which is this. So input, it's an asset because it's down here in resources, asset.remote service module. I'm just going to call this RSM. Now let's build our function. So there's two things I want in most request functions. So function, I'm going to call this get last price. And then we're going to have a string, which is our ticker. Tickler. <laughs> um, and a callback, which I'm just going to call CB. Now we need to actually build the request. So we're going to do var request. And you start building that request from what's called global dot request API system, I think. Let's refer to this. It's not in the documentation. A remote API request. Why was I typing that? Okay, remote API request <laughs> uh, dot create. Now this has request dot endpoint is going to be our endpoint in the API documentation. Then we're also going to use request dot parameters, which are the parameters for the request, which is an object. Everything in this should be a string, it, I believe. All the keys need to be strings. Um, and then we're also going to actually trigger the API call with script.rsm.performAPI request. And that takes in a the request first and then the function, uh, which the response will be passed into. So now we're going to do this. You can see what's going on in a second. And our ticker is going to be the snap. Callback is going to be a function price. We'll just print the price. Okay, so first thing we need to do is you can see we have an error now. Uh, click on your script up here, and we're going to add in our RSM. So we can click on that and click on Alpaca. You're going to get this pop up. Don't click later. Save and reopen this right now. I clicked on later in the first project I tried this with, and there was never actually a way to re-trigger this to where it would update the API access properly. So for now, make sure you save and reopen from here. Do not click later or you're gonna be stuck in limbo and have to make a new project. So save and reopen. All right, so now that we're back in the project, uh, what that did was restrict what we can access in the script because we are using this remote API request. Let's go into the documentation here, remote service module. This is under guides, by the way. All the way, all the way here at the bottom, you'll see the restrictions. So it says when using a remote service module, some APIs will be restricted in order to protect the user's privacy. 
So, you know, they don't want you to be sending user data to this API uh, or any API in the future that can identify users easily. So, yeah, this just basically restricts uh, user data from being sent. There's a typo there, too. <laughs> so, yeah, if we also go here, you can see what we just made there. Uh, it doesn't mention the parameters there, but if you go into any of these templates and look at their scripts, you can see more examples of that. But like I said, this is the only documentation currently, and it doesn't even mention the parameters. So it can be annoying, which is why I'm making this video so early for you guys. So you can get in on this before the documentation is fully fleshed out. All right, so we need to get our endpoint. This is strange. It's very strange. Let me show you why. Let's click on Alpaca here and then click on View Documentation. It'll take us to Documentation. And then I said we're using the historical data, so we're going to click on Historical Data here. And you can skip all of this, but it's basically a REST API. And now each of these, you know, this is the endpoint, technically. You know, this endpoint. This is what the endpoint would be in traditional web development or any other, you know, developments for using APIs. Snapchat doesn't think so, though. So the endpoint for this one, for instance, you know, it ends in trades. It's get, it's a get request, underscore trades which is strange. And then you have the parameters here, which are what you pass into that request.parameters thing. We're going to be using the last price from the snapshot, which is all the way down here at the bottom. See snapshot, snapshot by ticker as a symbol parameter, which is a string. And, uh, you know, this is called snapshot. So it's get underscore snapshot, basically. This is kind of what the title of these is basically... Um, the parameter or not the parameter, the endpoint name or more so this you know because get underscore snapshots is for the multiple get underscore snapshot is for the single it's a very weird way to do it i i would personally prefer snapchat just let us pass in the actual endpoint it'd be a lot less confusing but for now we have to deal with this confusing structure so get underscore snapshot all right and then our parameters like i said it's just symbol and the symbol to query for i believe all these keys in the parameter have to be strings because all of Snapchat's examples, they make these keys here strings. So we're gonna do that. And then the value is also a string, but we're actually passing that in as ticker. So we're just gonna type ticker there. All right, so this will actually send the request now when we run this function, how we have it set up, but we want to get our response, right? So we're gonna print response. And what do we get? We get an object. Okay, so you might think, you know, JSON stringify that, read what it says, it's going to be empty. That's because the response, uh, it has two objects off of it. The first one is response dot status code. One means good, uh, and it means it completed successfully. Anything but one is bad. So that's the first little bit of functionality we should code in here. If response dot status code does not equal one then we need to print, uh, we'll do request failed with code space plus, let's do a string here, wrap that uh, status code, just so it converts the number into a string in case it's not a string already. Uh, so now it will tell us the request failed and we also don't wanna execute anything after this, so we're gonna return as well. So now we can also try down here, print made it passed, just to show you what's happening. And we can see that made it passed, there was no error code thrown, but if we do like an endpoint that doesn't exist, it should say request failed with code three, and you won't get this print made it passed because it stopped at the return here. So you wanna keep everything after that return and after this if statement. All right, so the next one is, uh, we're gonna print it here, it's request, dot body this actually holds the response which is going to match uh, the response example here all of these have a response example this is what it's going to match it's going to be a bit hard to see in lens studio down here and we can see that our body is empty right now the reason for that is because it's some wonky json so how do we get that fixed we do json dot parse body we're actually going to set that to uh, var parsed equals json.parseBody. Uh, 
Oh, request. My bad. Or it's response.body. My bad. Response.body. You actually can print response.body. And it will show you the JSON. That's what I meant to do earlier. My apologies for that little hiccup there. But yeah, you can see it kind of gets cut off as well. You know, you, you really want to rely on this here. Because uh, that's what you're seeing. So to get the latest trade price, it's latest trade dot P. So first thing we need to do is parse that. JSON.parse essentially parses JSON like this. As you can see, it's clearly an object. Uh, it parses that object into an actual object. So now parsed is an object, not a string, like response.body is a string. Okay, so we can now do print, you know, parsed dot latest trade, which I'm just getting from here, by the way. Latest trade dot P is the price dot P should give us, you know, 50 something. So that's Snapchat's last trade price, 50.41. There you go. So now we can do our last price equals that. And we can fire our callback. So CB pass in the price, the last price. Now it's actually being printed from here. So now we have this, uh, you know, basic request working, we can pass in whatever, whatever stock ticker we want, it's going to give us back the price that we can then use inside this function here. Like I mentioned, we're going to actually put this into a text component. So do component dot text, just going to call that T for short, and add in some screen text here. Now click on your scene object with the script and add your screen text here. And now we do script dot T for the name of the text component up there dot text equals uh we're going to do first off the dollar sign do plus and then a string price just because price might not be a string always we'll wrap it around uh, we'll wrap a string around it to convert it to a string no matter what save that and you can see it is now accessing the price of snap and displaying it here on the text you'll see there's a little delay as it does the call so you may want to either just have this blank or what i might do is you know 0, 0.00 or just because there's two values there yeah so then after that you can do whatever you want with you know with this price value or any other values you get from the other endpoints as well you know you could do like if the price is greater than, you know, 50, or you look at the historical data, get the old prices or whatever, and you know, if it's gone up, make it green, if it's gone down, make it red, things like that. So there's a lot of possibilities here. This is your basic request structure. It's basically how you do it, access any of the endpoints. That's how you pass in parameters. Um, you know, refer to the templates here open them up in Lens Studio, and then you can view the scripts in them. Let's actually do that real fast. So a new project from template, recommended, it's gonna be the fast way to them right now. Do stock market API. Save this project for future reference as well. Yeah, so you can see Snapchat has this cool little example project. Um, and if you go here, scripts, Alpaca API wrapper, you'll see how Snapchat is doing these requests as well. Now they're handling the responses in this function, but you know, they've done the same thing as us. They do, to, they do a little more error handling, uh, you know, try to parse it first. And if not, then they'll catch the error and give that error. You may want to do that as well. Um, so yeah, Snapchat's doing these try catches here. Now I didn't do that, but it's definitely a solid thing to do. I highly recommend doing that. You know, it's not a hundred percent necessary, but then you leave yourself prone to more errors. And why would you do that? Just put the try catch in. Um, but you can also see, you know how Snapchat's doing it down here with more parameters. Like this is a long one here. And, you know, yeah, just a lot. They've also like made a handler and then, you know, accessed it in a more simple way from here. But yeah, look into the scripts of each of the templates and you can understand more how it works until we have the documentation fully available. I just want to get this video out to you guys as soon as possible so you can start creating with these new API features in Lens Studio.
um, and, and start making some lenses with them because, you know, it's always fun to use this stuff right at the start, but when there's not really any documentation, it can be frustrating. So I hope I helped you guys and I'll drop a link to the script I wrote in the, in the description below. Um, so you can refer to that as well. I want, I'm also going to throw in the try catch into the, uh, paste bin in the description. So the one in the description is going to have the try catch. Cause I truly think if you're just going to copy it, you, you should add that in. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. If you have any questions, make sure you drop them below. Peace.